Want a soar? Get a mentor. Hey, it's Nina Carmichael, and we made these videos. It's because you're probably the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you need a push by surround yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, my husband Evan Carmichael, and learn the biggest problem that is holding you back from success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one: Do what makes you proud. The problem is you're not proud of yourself. You might post about some accomplishment you've done on Facebook or Instagram, but when it's you by yourself, all alone, deep down, you're not actually proud of yourself. So why? Where does that come from? It's because you've taught yourself that you set goals and you don't consistently follow through. So now, when you set a new goal for yourself, you don't believe that you're actually going to follow through, and that continues to cycle on and on and spirals down into you not being proud of yourself. We need to change that today. So it starts with this: when you set a goal, you have to follow through. The only acceptable reason for not following through is you being proud of yourself. Are you proud of the reason why you didn't follow through? So a couple examples: when I started my tour, the very first stop, the pre-tour stop, was Boston. I had a goal at that time that I was going to run 30 minutes of cardio every day. We drove to Boston. I drove the whole way. Didn't sleep a wink. Got in at two in the morning. I hadn't done my cardio. What do I need to do? I need to do my cardio. Why? Because I told myself I committed to doing 30 minutes of cardio every single day. The cardio was the worst cardio of all time. Barely moving, right? Just kind of half eyes closed, trying to struggle my way through the 30 minutes. Health-wise, I burnt zero calories. It would have been better for me to go to sleep. Mentally, though, for the mindset, I'm pumped. It's when it's hard and you do the thing that you actually build your self-respect. Your self pride, your self love, your self confidence. When it's easy and you win, you could post about it on Instagram, congratulations. But you don't feel great about yourself because it was easy. But when it's hard and you try, that's when you start building self respect, self accountability, self pride. That's where it comes from. And so in Boston, I woke up the next day and I was tired and I had a, a sluggish, hard day trying to get through it, which was not great for my body. But mentally, I'm pumped. Like I did the thing when it was difficult. If I just went to bed, I would have had to ask myself, "Am I proud of the reason why I'm not doing this?" Other people would let me off the hook. I'm sure the people I went down with, Nina, my wife, Danny, my camera guy, would have said, "It's okay, go to sleep." But it's two in the morning. You drove all this way. It's a, it's a strange day. It's not a typical day. You have every reason in the world not to do it. People will let you off the hook all the time, because they don't hold themselves to high standards. And then they infect you with their lower standards. I would not have been proud of myself if I didn't do my run, even though the results sucked. It's the effort. That's where the pride comes from. Now we went off and did this crazy tour, 23 cities, 90 days. I committed to doing all of these cities. Then I broke my neck in Denver. <laughs> I broke my neck in Denver. I had to cancel my Denver event. I committed to going. That was my goal to go. I committed to people. They paid money. We had the refund. We had the cancel. We had to apologize. Am I proud of the reason why I didn't go? Yeah, I'm in the hospital. I can't go. Then we got to Kansas City as my next stop. The doctors didn't clear me to do a full three-hour event, so I could go for one hour. So I still canceled the event. I refunded everybody their money and said, "Guys, it's off, but I'm still gonna come. Like I'll refund you the money. I'm still gonna come. We'll do a Q&A for about an hour." And we'll see how long I can go. Take pictures. I booked the hotel anyway. I can't get a refund on that, so might as well come out if you want. And everybody still showed up. And instead of going for an hour, I went for an hour and a half. But I didn't go for the full three hours. I set a goal to go for three hours, right? That was my initial intention, my initial goal. I didn't do it. I only went for an hour and a half. But after the hour and a half, I, I had a concussion. So I'm, I'm starting to slow down. I'm getting a little dizzy. Getting a headache, and so we have to go. We got to leave. I, I couldn't take as many pictures as I wanted. Couldn't sign as many books as I wanted. But I'm still proud. I'm proud of the effort that I went and I tried. That was my max effort. I had to be pulled off because I had nothing left in me to keep going. Right? I probably would have passed out if I kept staying there a little bit longer. And so, are you proud of your effort? That's all. I can't judge if you're a success or not. 
people message me and, and DM me and send me emails and say, hey, Evan, should I be doing this or that? Like, what do you want to do? Are you proud of your effort? I can't judge. What does your version of balance look like? What time do you need to wake up in the morning? Do you want to wake up at four, at five, at six, at noon? I don't care. I don't care what time. You say you have to wake up at noon every day. Amazing. I'm pumped for you. Are you proud of your effort? I'm not going to judge your effort. This is one of the single biggest reasons why so many people fail. You're fronted on Instagram and Facebook with this perfect life. Meanwhile, you're not proud of yourself and the effort you're putting in. So I'm going to give you a three-step process. Follow this. You're going to start hitting your goals and start feeling better about yourself. Step number one is you set a goal. What's your goal? What do you want to accomplish? Something daily. Your goal should be a habit. So for example, I want to meditate for 10 minutes every day. Great. I want to run for 30 minutes every day. Amazing. I want to make a YouTube video every day. Awesome. Make that your goal. Some kind of habit that you can track on a daily basis. This is the start of building credibility with yourself. Look at that goal and then say, am I going to hit that goal? Like, is that going to actually happen? Do I believe in myself enough that this is going to happen? Or am I going to start and stop and start and stop and then fall off the cliff and be motivated today? But then in two weeks, I'm going to forget about it. Don't let that be you. Look at that goal. And say, I'm going to hit it. This is my goal. This is important to me. I am the kind of person that when I set a goal, I follow through unless I'm proud of the reason why I didn't, right? There's a tiny little bit of reasons that you might be proud of, but all the other ones you're just not proud of. You were tired, you forgot, you were slow, you were lazy, you were scared, you were fearful. Those are not acceptable reasons. You have to be proud of the reason why you don't follow through. So one, you set a goal, some daily kind of habit that you're gonna do on a consistent basis now. Number two, immediate momentum. Do one small thing right now to make some progress. One tiny small thing. I call it the 2% difference. Get the 2% difference right now. Don't worry about getting to 100%. Do something right now. If your goal was 30 minutes of running, great. Go do your run. You don't have enough time to do it. Great. Do two minutes of running. Meditate for 60 seconds. Anything. Send one email out. Make a quick 30 second YouTube video. Something immediate momentum. You are not allowed to set a goal and not create immediate momentum towards achieving it somehow. The 2% difference right away because tomorrow you're going to wake up a different person. Show yourself. You set goals, you follow through and you take immediate action. This is the start. This is the rewiring of your identity right now. We're doing it together. So step one, you set your goal. Step two, immediate action. The 2% difference right away. Step number three is you take the proud test. Whenever you're doubting, Whenever you're looking at that thing and say, I don't want to do it, you ask yourself, am I proud of the reason why I'm not going to do it? And if you get a no, you have to go off and do that thing. If you get a yes, okay, great. But if you get a no, you're honest with yourself. It's just you. Nobody's going to judge you right or wrong. No, I'm not going to be proud of myself. You have to go do that thing. You have to. And if you get up and you don't do it, then you need to reset your goal and make it easier. You need to reset your goal. Stop setting a hundred goals and then not following through. You have zero credibility with yourself. So just set one goal and do that one thing every day. Just start building up that reputation for yourself, not what other people think of you. The reputation for yourself. If you have 100 goals and do none of them, stop setting goals. It's not working. Eliminate all your goals. Just start with one goal a day. That's it. One simple goal a day to show yourself that when you set goals, you follow through. You're starting to rebuild and retrain your identity. And then when you do it, you wake up and you do the thing. Amazing. Celebrate. Pat yourself on the back. Put on a song. Dance. You did your meditation. You did your sales calls. You did your YouTube videos. You did it. You do that consistently. It's time for another goal. You keep injecting that into your life. You need to build that identity that when you set a goal, you follow through. That's who you are. Congratulations. I'm pumped for you. Can't wait to see where you take things. Rule number two, use to knowledge to your advantage. There are three ways to use technology and most people pick the one method that costs them money. You can be entertained, you can be educated, and you can create. Entertained, educated, create. The first one costs you money, entertainment. The second one is an investment, education. And the third one makes you money, create. The answer isn't to dump your phone and delete all social media. It's to use these insanely powerful tools to help you make money and achieve your goals. So what I want you to do is now evaluate how are you using technology and where does it fall into those three categories? Entertain, educate, and create. I'll use me as an example. I'll go first, you go next. So for me, let me look at YouTube as an example. Great. Number one, entertain. 
very little. The only entertainment content that I consume on YouTube is going to be one music, which is really more just getting my state into an energetic positive one. And two on the weekends, League of Legends, watching my team TSM, hopefully carry the day. Other than that, I don't spend any time on entertainment content. People send me links to videos. If Alex comes in and wants to show me some silly videos, like, dude, I'm working. I don't want to be entertained right now. I got stuff to do. I want to go crush it on my goals, on my dreams. I got a lot that I need to get done today. Don't send me this stuff. Two, educate. I use YouTube a lot. YouTube is my number one source for education, more than books, more than podcasts, more than anything else, conferences, anything. YouTube is where I learn. Video content is where I learn. Most of my time spent on YouTube is researching and reviewing video clips that I am personally getting inspired by that then I want to share with you. If I am making a video that I'm sharing with you on any of my channels is because I have learned something from them. So I'm spending most of my time on YouTube being educated. And then number three is create. And I'm creating a lot. <laughs> We're doing three videos a day across my seven channels. So I'm creating. So I'm using YouTube not just as a way that costs me money, right? That I have to go spend money to buy something, but I'm using it to invest into myself as well as to create content and then generates a return as I can build a business around it. Great. Next, let's go to Instagram. Same process. One, entertain. Zero. I consume nobody on Instagram. If I'm looking through anybody's Instagram feed, it's maybe a tiny little bit from friends or family who are off doing something or somebody on my team, right? Somebody on my team posts something, I wanna be there and support them and, and like it and, and give a quick comment. But I'm not, I don't care what anybody's posting on Instagram. If I'm following anybody else, it's just to see what they're up to that maybe I can learn some best practices. Two, education, very little. I would much rather learn from a YouTube video than from an Instagram post. I don't consume anybody to learn from them. Again, apart from they're using some tactics, some technique, a different video thumbnail, going to IGTV instead of video posts, that kind of hacking and understanding how the system works, but I don't go to Instagram at all, even for education. And then three is create. I create a lot. How did I go from 6,000 subscribers at the beginning of last year to 150, whatever I'm at right now, by creating. I post six times a day to Instagram, three videos, three pictures. I go live almost every single day. We do stories three to 20 times a day. I'm a creation machine. And so apply this to your business, to your technology, to your habits. How are you using this? How are you using your computer? How are you using social media? And how does it divide into those three chunks? entertainment, education, and creation. I see all these people who are deleting social media. They're de deleting it from their phones. They're deleting it from their accounts. You're losing. This is the way to make money. This is, this is the way to go and accomplish all your goals. You just don't know how to use it right. There's three ways to use it and you're picking the number one losing way just by being entertained. Stop using it as entertainment. Use it to help you accomplish your goals. And so run that process. Look at every social media site that you're using. Look at all the websites that you visit. Look at how you use your phone, how you use your computer, how you use the tech in your life and run each one through that filter and put a percentage next to it. What percent of my energy, of my time is going to entertainment on that platform, education on that platform or creation on that platform. And if you can switch the percentages from category one to two and three, you will start making a lot more money and move a lot closer to achieving your dreams. Rule number three, stop comparing to others. You need to stop judging your version of balance against someone else's. I think this is something that plagues at least the North American culture. We're constantly comparing what makes us happy against somebody else's life. You have a version of balance. You have a version of happiness. You have a version of passion. It's different for everybody. I can't judge you for what you're doing. The only test is, are you proud of yourself? Do your actions map to your ambitions? Is what's in your calendar a reflection of what will make you happy? And I think as soon as you can get into your own head, as soon as you can understand what happiness and balance and success looks like for you and stop comparing it against somebody else's version in your life or on Instagram, that's when you can actually go off and find the success you're after. So I look at my relationship with my wife as an example. She's sitting right here next to me. She's watching. She's been, I think, tuning out for most of my videos, but I said her name, Nina. So now she's paying attention. 
I look at our relationship and, and how much time do you want to spend with your significant other? Right. And so we made a decision that every morning we're going to go for a walk together. So we wake up, take the dogs out, we go for a walk. I'm not using the phone. I'm not on my device. I'll record one message and that's it. I'm not checking on email, nothing. We have our morning time together to go for a walk. Then we'll come in, we'll do a meditation together and then we'll start our day. Right in the evening, we'll then also wind down. We'll go for a walk in the evening. We'll we'll watch a show on TV together. Right now, we're into what are we watching? Arrows, Flash. I don't know if you guys hear that in the microphone. So Arrow, Arrow Flash, Flash League of League, League of Legends, <laughs> Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones, <laughs> and a few. So so usually at night we'll we'll stop. We'll turn off all the lights. We'll watch one show together, and then we'll go for a walk, and then and then wind down and go to bed. And then on Saturday is, is our fun day where I'll plan the whole day for us to do something. We'll, it'll be our cheat day to have whatever food we want. And, and that's what we do. And during the day, though, it's, it's work, right? She's now joined my company. She does a lot of projects to help me. But during the day, we're mostly working on the things that we need to do. That's our version of balance. And it'll, and it'll continue to evolve and adjust. For you, maybe that's the greatest thing of all time. Or for you, maybe that's the worst. Like, maybe you need to spend... 12 hours a day cuddling your husband or wife. Awesome, right? As long as they're both, on, the other person's on board with that strategy as well, right? It's unfair to judge your version of balance against mine or against anybody else's. You can use it as a cue. Maybe what I do sparks something interesting for you. Maybe you would now want to go off and do a morning 30 minute walk with your significant other just to connect and not be on the phones. You try on the hat and you see if it fits but don't judge yourself against what somebody else is doing. And so I think ultimately that's where it comes down to. You need to figure out what do you want? What do you love? What does balance look like for you? In your business, in your life, right at home, at the office, everywhere. What, what does a successful life for you look like? What do you need to do for you to make yourself proud? And forget about what anybody else thinks. This is what you need to do for you and your relationships and your business and your success. Figure out what that is and then start taking action against it. I'm gonna give you a three-step process that I think will help. Step number one is book a time for yourself. Book a time, book an afternoon, book three, four, five hours off. Find time, just make it happen. Saturday morning, Friday afternoon, whatever. Book a time, go to a coffee shop and say, this is my time where I'm gonna figure out what my life should look like. Number two, ask yourself, what does a balanced life look like for you? For you, what does it look like? As, as a father, husband, wife, mother, entrepreneur, boss, leader, employee, like whatever, areas of your life. What does balance look like for you right now, this weekend, right? Or, or today. Don't worry about what it's going to be in five years. It'll, sh it'll shift. It'll change. It's okay. What does a balanced life look like for you? For you. You're spending all this time. You're spending hours. You blocked off an afternoon or a morning. It's not asking anybody else. It's not asking your parents. It's not asking your best friend. Forget them. This is not about them and their subjective opinion of what your life should look like. It's about you. It's about spending time with yourself and figuring out what a balanced ideal life looks like for you. And then step number three is make one immediate change to your calendar. Success is habits, right? Your balanced life, your happy life is your habits. It's what you consistently do. You are what you consistently do. And so if you've decided this is what a balanced life looks like for me, great. Now, if you look at how you're actually spending your time, chances are there's something that's off. And so make an immediate change. What's one change that you can make to your calendar that you will consistently do on a daily or weekly basis that will bring more joy, happiness, balance to your life? Also, if you wanna have more self-confidence and self-belief, the science says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action for you to shift that habit forward. So I've designed a special free program to help you get more self-belief for every day for 254 days. I will send you an email to an unlisted video that if you watch it, We'll shift your confidence forward. The links to join for free are in the description below. Because your book has come out, it doesn't mean you should stop marketing. It's not just about week one when it just comes out. It's constantly marketing, 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 marketing. Don't go to them asking for help first. Go to them with value first so that they're stumbling all over themselves to try to find a way to help you out too. Bring value first. For me, my goal is to help a billion entrepreneurs. And so I wanted, I always want to work on projects that have the ability to have a massive impact. That's what I strive for every single day. Rule number four, work hard and smart. If you want to succeed as an entrepreneur, you need to work both hard and smart. You need both. Everybody who's had massive success did both. 
Forget about trying to work a four hour work week. Forget about passive income. Yes, you can make a little bit. Yes, it might be supplemental income to help you along your journey. But if you wanna do something impactful, you wanna have a, a big change in the world, you wanna really be somebody special and have a, a, a ripple effect out from you, you gotta do both. You gotta work really hard. Look at whoever your heroes are. Whoever it is that you look up to. They didn't get there by having things handed to them. And they didn't get there by trying to create passive income or work four hours a week. And I love the four hour work week book. There's a lot of principles you can use in there, except the fact that when you are committed to something and you love it, you got to go all in on it. Stop being lazy. Lazy people don't change the world. Lazy people don't have a huge impact. I want you to have a huge impact. And so hard work is just your ticket in. Hard work alone is not the answer. There's lots of people who work really hard and they never rise up, they never reach their potential, right? You can work really, really, really hard as a cashier, but if you're not thinking on a bigger scale and you're not working smart as well, then you'll just continue to work really, really hard as a cashier and make whatever a cashier makes and that's where you stay. Hard work does not guarantee your success, but there is no success without hard work. Period. It doesn't exist. Show me somebody who you really look up to and really respect, who hasn't put in a ton of effort, hard work, and smart work to make it happen. And so I think if you are just looking for shortcuts, if you're just looking for ways to make that passive income or ways to work four hours a week and then spend the rest of the time lying on the beach, you're being lazy. And you haven't really tapped into the thing that you love doing. Because I can tell you, you get tired of lying on the beach. You may not agree because your life sucks right now, because your work sucks right now, because you're just trying to escape, but people want to do things that have meaning. After you've escaped your life and you spent a year on the beach, you're going to get tired, you're going to get bored. You want to do something that fills you up. We want to contribute. Human beings want to contribute. We want to feel like the work that we're doing matters and we like to work. We like to feel like the activities that we're filling up our day with mean something to somebody else. So you've got to find that. And when you do, you don't want to just work four hours a week. It fills you up. You want to do it a lot. It doesn't mean you're spending 24 hours a day doing it. You got to find the balance for you. But when you find the work that you love, you want to go all in on it. You want to keep going because it fills up your soul. So you've got to work hard and you've got to work smart. It's the only way to succeed as an entrepreneur. Rule number five, get used to rejection. Rejection is part of life as an entrepreneur. You are gonna get rejected over and over and over and over again. It's just part of being an entrepreneur and being in business. The first thing you put out won't be very good. People will hate on it. People will give some constructive criticism as well. People will say no because they don't know you, trust you, like you, and so you won't get those first deals. It takes a lot of time to build up a business and make it successful. And even when you've gotten to that point where you're feeling happy and you're bringing on a team and building the business, you're still gonna get rejected constantly. It's just part of life as an entrepreneur. And so if you can't handle that, it's going to be a really hard road for you to be an entrepreneur. I think the way to get through rejection, there's two ways to do it. One is to use rejection as fuel, kind of like what Jack Ma did. Like I got rejected 10 times by Harvard. One day I'm going to go teach there, right? One day I'm going to go speak there. To use that as fuel, it's like you turn me down, I'm going to show you. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to come back and be the teacher there, right? You turn me down for this deal, I'm going to go get a deal 10 times as big. Right? So that's one. You can, either, you can use rejection as fuel to help you go off and do something bigger and, and motivation to, I'm going to prove them wrong. The second way is just to forget about it. Just get used to it. That's more what I do. I don't really use rejection as fuel. It doesn't really bother me when somebody turns me down or when a new series doesn't work. I was trying to think when I was preparing for this video, what's the recent rejection that I have? Because there's been so many but none really stick out as being super memorable. The one that I came up with was, I tried a new series on the weekend uh, a while ago about the best of Kickstarter. And it was a new series that I was testing of showing different Kickstarter ideas that I thought might be helpful for you. And that video didn't do as well as I would have liked, didn't do as well as other videos, and we're probably gonna kill that series. But that's okay, like I've killed tons of series. It happens all the time on the channel, and I couldn't even tell you all the series that I've killed because they didn't perform. You guys rejected them. It's okay. I just moved past it. And so either one, you have two strategies to go for. Use the rejection as fuel to say, I'm going to show you how wrong you are 
and prove it to them or just forget about it, get used to it, it's gonna happen, it's just part of the game and you move on and just think about the next thing that you can go off and build. Use either one of those strategies, but don't get stuck in the rejection. Rule number six, act despite fear. Fear is normal. It's part of what makes you human. You would not be human or you'd have some crazy condition if you never felt fear. I think the people who say don't be afraid aren't giving you practical advice. It's be afraid, feel the fear, and then step into it and do it anyway. And the more you get used to taking on those fearful projects that you're scared of, the stronger you'll get, the more resistance you'll get, the higher tolerance you'll get to do bigger, better, bolder, badder things. I think the trick though is spotting the fear. Here's what I think happens to most people. There's some opportunity that comes along, there's some moment that comes along, whether it's with a client or meeting somebody or an event, something comes along that you're afraid of. You're afraid of doing it. It's gonna stretch you beyond what you've ever done before. And then what you do is you rationalize saying no. I don't have the money to go to that event. I'm too busy to go and do that thing right now. You find the reason why you can't go and do it. You rationalize it, but really deep down, the reason is you're just afraid. And until you spot the fear, until you understand that it's really just the fear, then you're never gonna solve the problem. So step one is understanding when there is fear. Step two is then stepping into it and doing it anyway. And a lot of this stuff is just so subconscious. You know, we as human beings are kind of trained to, when we're afraid, something's gonna go wrong and to be safe. And so it's trying to catch that subconscious action and proactively change it. So as an example for me, when I was starting my YouTube channel, my agent would tell me, you have to go out and do videos in public. I want you to go out on the street and make a video in public. My natural reaction was fear, but I didn't catch it. Initially it was, the gear won't be as good in public, you know, I can't control the light settings, I'm gonna be bouncing around with the camera, it's not gonna be a great experience for the people watching, why would I do that? I'm rationalizing a reason why I don't have to do it, or really I'm just afraid, right? You could solve all those problems. And he told me, stop being afraid and just go out and do it. <laughs> he cut through it and let me see my own fear. And so I did it. And when I first went out and filmed in public, I took out, it was my phone or my camera, I don't remember. And I'm walking down the street and then the postman is there. And so as soon as I see the postman, I quiet down. I can put the camera away, just walking normally. And then when the postman leaves, I'm back to filming. And that time I noticed like, I'm doing it because I'm afraid. And I got pissed. Okay, next time I gotta speak up. Next time I gotta do better. And so I went out and forced myself to go and do it again. And I was walking past and there were these construction workers. And instantly again, the, the panic sets in like, <gasps> people are watching, these construction workers. I'm like, I know they don't really even care about me and what I'm saying, what's happening on the street. But I forced myself through it. It was awkward, it wasn't great. I think I had to redo it again anyway, but I, I took the step. I got better at it. I recognized the fear and I jumped into it. And now it's to the point where I'll, I'll make videos walking down the hall, I'll make videos when I'm at Disneyland, Disney World, you know, I'll make videos in the streets of anywhere. And there's still a moment, even now, after how many videos I've done, there's still a moment of who's watching. I think it's natural, normal. It's not as strong as it used to be. And more importantly, it doesn't limit me from doing the thing that I want to do. And so spotting the fear and not rationalizing it away and not just doing what your subconscious always does that keeps you down where you are is so important. Being truthful that the reason why you said no or you're not taking this opportunity is just because you're afraid. And the answer to saying no should never be because I'm afraid. You want to rejig your system. So whenever that's the answer, because I'm afraid to do it, now you have to do it. Rule number seven, the last one before our very special bonus clip, start small. I hate spending money until I'm making money. If you do not have money, it's because you are spending your money on things that are not making you money. This is what happens in so many entrepreneurs' businesses when you're starting. You go and you spend a whole bunch of money on different gear, equipment, samples, products, and then it doesn't work out. Instead of going out and spending money at the start, find a way to get started on the cheap, 
Invest in your energy, your hustle, your drive, your initiative, but not your money. Here's what happens. Someone wants to start a t-shirt business. Okay, great. To get the price discounts that you want so that on a per t-shirt basis it's cheaper, you have to order 5,000 t-shirts. So you go out and you spend all your money ordering 5,000 t-shirts. Or worse, you go take a loan so you can get your 5,000 t-shirts. The t-shirts come in. You sell three of them. And then you have 4,997 t-shirts sitting in your mom's basement. That's most people. You'll spend money because you've got this ambitious dream and vision and you see in your head how it's all gonna work out. But then when you get started, it never works out like you think it's gonna work out. When I first started on YouTube, I had a team of eight or so people already in my other business, in my main business. I said, I'm gonna try this thing on the side, just as a fun thing and see how it goes. I did everything myself, myself. I did everything myself. I invest my energy, my heart, my hustle, my drive, my intuition into making something happen. And once I started making some money, then I could invest into building a team, into getting gear, into building this business up. So now we've got 24 people on the team. When I first started doing my Instagram Live morning shows, it was me and my tripod and a cell phone and, and a guest. And we went live on Instagram every day. And then people said, hey, you should get a microphone. Okay, great. I got a quick little microphone that connected. And we went. Now, this thing might be the future. That may be all I do. I might even close down YouTube and just do Instagram Lives. And if that happens, then I'll invest in a team in making that happen. Maybe in three years, if I'm still doing it, there'll be 20 people in the room from a producer and camera people and editors and everybody's in the room guiding the show, right? That might be the future, but I don't know. I gotta start by just doing one show. You do not have money because you're spending your money on the things that are not working and generating money back for you. So stop spending money. Stop it. Stop it right now. Stop spending money on things that don't make you money. Instead, invest your energy, your hustle, your time, your drive as a default until you're making a little bit of money from that thing. A little bit of money from that thing. And then you can invest that money to make more money. So let's take the t-shirt company as an example. Instead of going out and buying 5,000 t-shirts, you buy zero and you upload your design to one of the t-shirt on demand services. Now, you're gonna make less money per t-shirt. Great, but your first five to 10 designs may not work out, and this is your chance to test it. So even though you're making less per t-shirt, you're actually making cash flow, right? You're making a profit, you have money coming in, even though it's not as much as you want. But you can test your designs in a zero risk environment. And then when you find the design that's popping, that's hitting hard, and you're building your brand, and you're getting customers, then you could take it off of the print-on-demand service. Then you can go and buy the 1,000 shirts, the 5,000 shirts, the 10,000 shirts, because you know it works, because you know it's gonna sell. That's how you wanna do it strategically. So stop spending money until you're making money. Whatever big dream, ambitious goal you have, I love it, it's amazing, yes, keep to it. And then find the smallest possible way to get started. Take that big goal and chunk it down into the smallest possible thing that you can do right now, ASAP, to start progress, to start building momentum. You wanna start a YouTube channel? Amazing, go right now. You don't need to have fancy gear or lights or microphone or equipment. You don't have to have any of that stuff. Just start, take your phone, record a video, upload it, start. Build momentum, get better, start making a little bit of money, take that money, invest it back in your business. Your money invested properly will help you grow. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your plan of action for the next week. When you watch a video and just get motivated, the science says you have a 35% chance of actually following through on your goals. That, that's not good enough, no? Not for you, Believe Nation, we gotta do something. But when you write it down, and you create a specific plan of action for the next week, that number jumps to 91% chance of you following through. And when you commit to somebody else, like leaving a comment on this video, it jumps to 95%. You need to follow through on your goals. So what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and your specific plan of action for the next week? Put it down in the comments below so I can celebrate you. It can be hard to keep perspective when you hit a rough patch. It can be hard to stay sane and stay motivated and stay optimistic when you fall on tough times, when something doesn't go right, when the market slows down, when you lose a big customer. And that's part of the game of being an entrepreneur. We're gonna have these highs and lows, but hopefully we're moving forward in a positive direction. And part of winning as an entrepreneur is just sticking with it. 
It's just staying on the path. It's just every day getting up and being consistent and moving forward. You only really lose if you give up, right? And so you can lose little battles, but if you keep going, you're gonna win the war. And I think what really helps you keep consistent and keep motivated and keep on every day getting up and fighting is remembering the why, is remembering your big dream, the big goal, what you're trying to accomplish. And so for me, I think about untapped potential. You know, I think the biggest problem in the world is untapped human potential. I think if we can solve that, we solve all the major problems of the world. And I think the way to help untap people or help to unlock them, help bring out that potential is through the environment, right? You may not have that with your friends and your family, your parents, the people around you, but you can get that from the books and videos and the resources that you watch and consume. And so it's why I created this YouTube channel. It's like what keeps me motivated on a daily basis is thinking about that big problem. The biggest problem the world is facing is untapped human potential. And if I can create content that slowly moves people forward, slowly helps unlock a little bit of potential. If you keep hearing the same message multiple times from different people, slowly it starts to seep in, right? The more time you spend around successful people, the more you want to become successful, the more you adopt their mindset and positivity. And the more you hang around people who are not accomplishing things, who are complaining and who are negative, the more you're gonna be like those people. And so my solution is to create that for you, for myself. I wanna be around uber successful people and have their mindset seep into me. And so whenever things don't go my way, whenever a series doesn't work out, whenever something happens, you know, life is gonna happen. Problems are gonna happen in business. It's never just a straight line up. Whenever those things happen in my business, people often ask, well, how do you stay optimistic? How do you, how do you stay going? How are you so positive all the time? Well, it's because I believe in where we're going, right? Like, I have a big dream. I wanna help a billion entrepreneurs. I wanna help unlock potential. And I believe that the way to do it is through the environment. And so even though this one thing didn't work out, it's not everything, right? It's, it's being able to step out from the trees to see the forest, to see the big picture. So we may have lost one battle, but I'm still fighting the war and I'm gonna have an impact and I'm gonna make a difference. And so just reminding myself of the why, what I'm trying to accomplish, why I'm doing it, that gets me fired up again to overcome whatever short-term hassles or problems that I'm facing. If you want to learn how to succeed on everything you do, check out the video next to me. I think you're gonna enjoy, continue to believe. I will see you there. You want somebody to pay attention to you? Bring value first. You want somebody to buy from you, to hook you up with a partner, to talk about you in a, in a speech on stage. Like you want people to do stuff for you? Bring value first.